Member for Burnby North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise to speak in favour of the motion, be it resolved that this House unanimously agree that climate change, habitat loss, and pollution are negatively impacting wild salmon survival, and that this House reaffirm its commitment to investments in wild salmon conservation solutions. Mr. Speaker, I represent Burnaby North, and while it's located on the unceded traditional territory of the Tsleil-Waututh Nation, it is also part of the third largest city in British Columbia and a densely populated urban area. So you might be asking yourself, what could she possibly know about salmon conservation? Well, Mr. Speaker, my answer is not much. But I do have a constituent who is a world-renowned expert in the field. So I asked him for some guidance. Mark Angelo is a river conservationist. He founded BC River Days and World River Days and has been awarded the Order of British Columbia and the Order of Canada for his work. Thanks to his leadership, after 80 years, salmon has returned to spawn in Gwich'in Creek and Still Creek, which run through the industrial heart of Burnaby. As the head of the Fish, Wildlife and Recreation Program at BCIT and the inaugural chair of the Rivers Institute, Mark has mentored generations of river conservationists. So, Mr. Speaker, here's what Mark Angelo told me when I asked him how should this House reaffirm its commitment to investments in wild salmon conservation solutions. He said, the heart of the Fraser between Hope and Mission is one of the most productive stretches of river on earth. It supports our biggest single spawning run of salmon, is a migration corridor for millions of other salmon, supports almost 30 species of fish, and includes our finest white sturgeon habitat. But it's also an area that's threatened by an array of impacts, including urbanization, industrial development, agricultural expansion, and excessive land clearing. We need a collaborative plan, a conservation strategy for the heart of the Fraser. To address this, the province could look at options, such as convening a planning table in conjunction with DFO. It can consider establishing additional wildlife management areas within the reach, or it could actively support efforts to acquire key habitats for conservation purposes. Mark also praised BC's Healthy Watershed Initiative. To refresh our memories, I would remind us that the BC Watershed Initiative was introduced last year as part of our economic recovery plan. Our government has provided $27 million in stimulus funding to more than 60 watershed shed conservation and restoration projects. This investment creates jobs, protects freshwater ecosystems, and helps communities adapt to climate change. Mark sees this as an important initiative and hopes we can turn it into an ongoing watershed security fund with matching funds from the federal government. He points out that many of the projects currently being funded by the initial $27 million that the province contributed in 2020 are focused on the very things this motion speaks to. Mark Angelo, founder of World R River Days, has a lot of other ideas for tangible actions that could benefit salmon greatly. I urge the members opposite to join us in supporting this motion and working with us to invest in wild salmon conservation solutions. Thank you.